Hey guys, it's Bub here, and as you're taking a look at X-Lite Micro 10. Now we've taken a look in the past at X-Lite Micro 11, which I said was the worst version of Windows 11. So does the Windows 10 build of this crazy operating system still hold up? I said it was a, the worst version, I'm talking about Micro 11, for multiple reasons, but one of which was because you're claiming to have a light version of Windows, which is competing with things like Tiny 11 or Tiny 10, but yet you load it full of crap that is just unnecessary. For example, this background right here. So that's why I'm eager to see what Micro 10 looks like. Is it as bad as Micro 11? And so far, I, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling like it is, just based on what I'm looking at so far. But we'll give it some credit, let's let this install, and then we'll see where we end up once we get into the out-of-box experience. Alright, and here we are. So there was no out-of-box experience, it jumped straight into the desktop, which, I mean, I guess that's fine, I'm just a little confused on, like, why. I know a lot of custom ISOs do that, but I prefer the out-of-box experience, it just makes it feel more complete. So the first thing we're going to do is install VMware Tools and then see where that goes. But the first thing I want you to keep in mind is that this OS is trying to compete with things like Tiny10 and Tiny11. So just keep that in mind as you see some of the UI elements that I'm about to point out. For example, the window borders. What in the world are these? If you're trying to cut down on space for Windows X Lite, why would you include or change the window border, uh, the buttons? That is just stupid to me. Um, I mean, okay, great. And they, they're not even a consistent color. Like, see how it's orange, and now it's blue. Uh, that is really stupid. Additionally, there's this extra folder icon here that gives us some extra things like desktop shortcuts, um, touch keyboard, input applications, uh, change username, things like that. Um, so on the desktop itself, we have our notification center, which is typical. We have our time with seconds enabled by default, which is something I like. We have our speaker volume, network, and typical stuff running. So I'm glad to see that there's no like actual bloatware. Again, going back to the theme of why change it, the file explorer icon is to not even something that's ever been seen in Windows before. And again, the start menu has been changed to the Windows 8.1 logo, which again, why if you're trying to make something that's lightweight, why would you do this? And looks like we're using something like Classic Shell or another custom start menu. Uh, so by default, we have settings, clear and startup, Windows accessories, Windows admin tools, PowerShell, Windows system, and XLite tools. But again, like I said, and I'm going to reiterate this a lot, why would you do this if you're trying to create a custom ISO that is lightweight? You're just adding more stuff into the operating system. Moving into the task manager so we can actually see what we're using. This VM has a Core i7-10700K and 2 gigabytes of RAM. So we're utilizing 1 out of 2 gigabytes of RAM, so we're utilizing exactly 50%. And as for the CPU, I only gave it two cores, um, but we're using 55, 21, 2%, you know, typical Windows CPU usage. It jumps all over the place. And then as for storage, again, keep in mind we're doing a light OS. It's using exactly three gigabytes, which actually is not bad. That is better than I expected because we've cut, they've cut out so many uh, unnecessary applications. Um, let's take a look at what version of Windows we're actually running here. We are using Micro 10. This is Windows this 22H2, so the latest version. With what I believe is the latest updates, I'm so out of the loop on what happens with Windows 10, so that might be okay. I might not be. I'm not 150% sure on that. Um, right clicking on the desktop it gives us some extra like quote god mode tools uh, such as the ability to open a command prompt open control panel and open control panel in god mode uh, kill unresponsive tasks which I do like that apparently there was one that was non-responsive restart explorer so just like that safe mode so we can restart into safe mode with all these tools we can look at system properties um, and then it moves straight into our typical Windows tools. Uh, let's see. So they did add some other custom backgrounds, which are pretty cool. But again, you're trying to make a lightweight version. Why would you not just stick with the regular one? Is there actually a web browser on this? I don't think there is. There is not a web browser by default. I would have at least left Microsoft Edge. So this isn't the worst version I've ever seen, but it's 
definitely interesting. Uh, a lot of questionable decisions here as to why this was created like this, but hey, I'm not the developer. So with that being said, thank you for watching this video. Definitely let me know in your comments below what you think about this weird version of Windows. With that being said, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one.